Hello guys, in this lesson we're going to be studying hydrocarbons, which maybe is what you think it is, and we'll also do a little bit of work around general formula, which is just a teensy bit of math. The homework associated with this lesson is here. We'll do that in class tomorrow. Here's your aim. Please copy that down before I see you in class. And underneath the aim, copy down these particular do now questions, which we'll answer in class tomorrow. All right, so alkanes. Alkanes are molecules like the ones you see here, but before we jump right into that, I'd like to explain a little bit about what a hydrocarbon is. So a hydrocarbon is, by definition, an organic molecule, but it can only have two constituents, and those are carbons, but also hydrogens, and that's the reason why we would call them, of course, hydrocarbons. So these structural formulas all have something in common, which is that they're all hydrocarbons that contain carbon and hydrogen only. And in addition, they all have only single bonds. So they're all saturated and they don't have any double bonds. In terms of their differences, they just are different sizes. Each one will differ from the one before it by one carbon and two hydrogens. So in the first one, you have CH4. And in the second one, you have C2H6 which is to show that you differ by one carbon and two hydrogens between these two. So now we can define alkanes. Alkanes are hydrocarbons that contain only single bonds. And furthermore, they are all flammable and they all produce CO2 and water when they're burned in the presence of oxygen. So I'll highlight that in blue because that's important as well and I want you to write that down. So are alkanes considered saturated or unsaturated? Well, I actually uh, jumped the gun on that one, and I already told you earlier that they're saturated, and that's because they have all single bonds. All right, and the last thing on this slide is to explain how to name alkanes. So I brought up table P for you, obviously in your reference table, um, and it gives you these prefixes that we get to use for um, a certain number of carbon atoms. So for instance, in the first molecule, we have only one carbon atom, so we come over to table P, and we're gonna name this molecule um, meth, Ain. The meth comes from the prefix for one carbon, and the ain is the suffix for alkanes. If you follow that pattern, you'll see that this uh, next molecule, the one with two carbons, is going to start with eth for two carbons, and it'll end in ain. So I'm going to keep following these patterns, um, and I'm just going to fill them in as we go, um, and you guys can let me know tomorrow if you have any questions about how table P relates to any of these names. So there we are, and then before we leave this slide, I just wanted to point out this uh, term, homologous series. A homologous series is this. It's just a series of molecules that are all alike, except that each successive one differs from the one before it by one carbon and two hydrogens. So that's how you name alkanes. So alkanes, uh, so alkenes, and I'm trying to be careful with my pronunciation here, Alkenes are similar to alkanes. They're sort of like cousins. Um, things they have in common are that they are hydrocarbons, meaning they contain only carbon and hydrogen. Um, but a difference between them is that alkenes will contain at least one double bond, whereas alkanes contained only single bonds. And so now we can fill in this little bit right here. Alkenes are hydrocarbons that contain at least one double bond. And that would mean that alkenes are unsaturated, um, you're only saturated if you have only single bonds. And we can also use table P, our table of organic prefixes, to name alkenes. So we'll just do a couple of examples on this slide. Um, for instance, we have this molecule right here, which has two carbons, so we're going to start its name with eth. But since it contains that double bond, it belongs to the alkene family, so we'll have to end its uh, name with ene. So ethene would be inappropriate name. And for the next one, we have three carbons, so we'll start it with prop. And we'll end it with ene because it contains the double bond that all alkenes have. And so we also need to compare alkynes to alkenes and alkanes. So alkynes, which end with a Y, are also hydrocarbons, so that's a similarity between alkanes and alkenes. And a difference would be that alkynes contain at least one triple bond. 
So we can fill in this bit right here. Alkynes are hydrocarbons that contain at least one triple bond. And that also means they're unsaturated because saturated, again, is only for single bonds. And we can also use table P to name alkynes. I only have one example on this slide, but uh, it's a pretty easy one. So we have this two carbon alkyne. So two carbons is F. And since it belongs to the alkyne family because it has this triple bond, we will end it with the suffix "-ine", so ethine. Uh, last question on this slide. Uh, we use ethynes uh, commonly for uh, high energy fuels, like the fuel that we need to do welding, which is why I have this awesome like welding woman here. But um, ethine molecules are very energy rich because of the triple bond. The, the more bonds you have between two carbon atoms, the more energy is stored there. So in order of energy, you have um, single bonds, and then double bonds, and then triple bonds have the most. So it's easy to identify an alkane, an alkene and an alkyne by looking at how many bonds exist between carbon atoms. Like a single bond is an alkane. If you have at least one double bond, it's an alkene. And if you have at least one triple bond, it's an alkyne. But if you were looking at just a molecular formula and you did not have anything like visual, like a structural formula to look at, would you be able to tell um, whether it's an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne? Like just looking at C6H12, can you tell what kind of molecule is that? Um, at first glance, you might think there's no way to tell, but there is a way to tell, but you just need to look at table Q, which gives us some general formulas. So these general formulas uh, have strange appearances at first, like CnH2n plus 2. Uh, it looks like an awful lot to understand, but it's actually pretty easy. Um, the n represents the number of carbon atoms. So if you look at something like CnH2n, uh, the, the n just tells us how many carbon atoms are in the formula, and then we can tell uh, which formula it belongs to. So I'll copy these formulas in right here while first pausing to acknowledge that they all have the same basic formula. They all start out with CnH2n. The difference is that an alkane will be the 2n plus 2, and the alkyne will be a 2n minus 2, and the alkenes will just be 2n. But um, other than that, they're the same. So last piece of advice before we try one of these is I normally just frame all of my thinking in terms of the alkenes because it's really easy for me to just multiply a number times two and know what it's gonna be. Um, so let's, let's try some examples. So C3H6, first of all, I'm looking at the six and the three because this is N in the equation and this is either 2N or it's 2N minus two or it's 2N plus two. And I can really easily see that six is just two times three. So the general formula here is CNH2N. For the next one, uh, 5 versus 12. If this were just a 2n, then I would really be expecting a 10, and this is 2 higher than 10. So the general formula is going to be CN 2n, CN H 2n plus 2. And for the last example, um, if we have a 4 here, then a 2n would give you an 8. 6 is 2 less than that, so I would say that the general formula for this one is CN H 2n minus 2. So the hydrocarbons that have the formula CnH2n are all called alkenes. CnH2n plus 2, those are all called alkanes. And CnH2n minus 2, those are all called alkynes. That's all information that's freely available on table Q. And the IAPAC names are going to be based on the number of carbons as well as the family name. So I brought up table P here to help us out. But um, in the first example, we have three carbons. So the, we're going to use a prop prefix. And the suffix is going to be ene. So best answer is prop ene. For the next one, we're starting out with five carbons. So our prefix is going to be pent. And the family name is alkane. So we're going to end this one in the suffix ane, pentane. And our last example has four carbons, so the prefix is but, and it belongs to the alkyne family, so we're going to end it in ein. And with that, we have reached our pair up, so please copy down these questions. We'll solve them in class tomorrow. 
and our summary. Please copy these down. We'll solve these in class tomorrow as well. Hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.